and welcome to the first video in this quick tip series. In this video we will be making a dithered effect, where a colour is represented in black and white by using different patterns. The dithering algorithm we will be using is called ordered dithering, which means for each light level, a chunk of the pixels contains an extra shaded pixel, thus making it appear a stronger shade. This is shown in this image here. At each shade, an extra pixel is added to the chunk. So at shade 1 we have 1 white pixel, then at 2 we have an extra white pixel, 3 we have an extra one, and 4 they are all fully shown. In this case a chunk is 2x2 two two pixels, however our implementation will be 3x3 three three pixels. Let's implement this with Hexflexel. Create a new basic project by writing Flexel, TPL, barebones for a basic template, space dash n space dithering. Now let's open that up in Sublime Text. And let's open the play state. Now let's fill this in. So we need to import openfl.display.bitmapdata so that we can use the bitmap data class. Openfl.display.bitmap data. And then uh, we need to create the actual bitmap data variable. And so we can write there bitmap data equals new bitmap data width height and I'm going to put width and height in a separate variable so it's easy to change them but their width and at the moment that will just be the window width so their width equals flex g dot width and one for the height too Like that. Now this isn't a flick sprite like we're used to because we're using an openfl.display.bitmap data because flick sprites don't allow per pixel manipulation which we need with this dithering code. We will later create a flick sprite though and bind it to this bitmap data because we can't add a bitmap data to the screen but we can add a flick sprite. Now let's actually make the dithering. Because we will be dithering every pixel create a for loop for the width and inside a for loop for the height. That should look like this. So for x in 0 dot 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 width then inside this for y in 0 dot 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 height. This will loop through every pixel in our bitmap data so we can change it and apply our dithering code to that specific pixel. Now let's work out the shade for this specific pixel. This will be a standard distance check to a specific point. So that point will be one third of the width and one third of the height. So let's just write there x offset equals x. So this pixel's x position minus width divided by 3. And there y offset will be equal to y minus height divided by 3. And then we will get the actual distance and this is just a standard distance formula that you can find anywhere on the internet. So their shade is equal to, because the shade of this pixel will be the distance to the width divided by 3 and the height divided by 3, that point there. So map dot sqrt for square root and then x offset uh, squared, so x offset times x offset plus y offset times y offset. And that will get the exact distance from this pixel to this point we specify here. This will be, of course, the exact distance to that pixel. Uh, this number needs to be divided because we don't want the exact distance, we want a shade. And by a shade, I mean a small number between 1 and 10. 
to do that, we will divide it so it's much smaller and make it a standard integer instead of a float by flooring it. So to do that, we'll just say shade divide equals width divide by 16. I've just found that's a nice um, rough formula to get a pretty good sizing uh, shade. And then shade equals math.floor to make it an uh, integer type variable. Now that we know the shade of this pixel, let's work out whether the pixel should be light or dark with dithering. As I said, dithering works with small chunks. Above our loop, we should declare a new variable called dither size. And this should be set to 3. This is because our dither will be based on 3x3 three three chunks. The image I showed before was 2x2 two two chunks. Now below that, we will declare a new variable called dithering lookup and this will be an array of numbers. This contains the required shade levels for each pixel in a chunk. So as complex as it sounds, if a shade is larger than the pixel it looked up from this array, it should show white, otherwise it should be black. This is shown in this modified image of the 2x2 dither. The lookup table is 3, 2, 1, 4. This means that the first shade fills the bottom left pixel, and then the next shade, shade 2, fills the top right pixel, because 2 is smaller or equal to the shade 2, and 1 is smaller or equal to the shade 1. 1 is still shown in the second shade though, because 1 is of course less than 2. The shade of which each pixel should be shown is stored in this lookup table. So it's this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's copy out our table for 3x3 three three dither. You can find these on the web. I just found this one on this website here. So we will be copying these numbers here into our array. So it will be 8, 3, 4, the top row of our dithering lookup chunk. And you could put these all on the same line, but just so it's clear, I'm going to go to the next line to put the next numbers, 6, 1, 2, and then down 7, 5, 9. That will be our dithering lookup. This means that the first shade fills the middle pixel because that's 1, the next shade fills the middle and the middle right pixel because 1, 2, then it will fill 3, the top middle one, the centre one, and the middle right one. Now we can go back inside our loop and apply this dithering logic. Our bitmap data is much larger than the 3x3 three three lookup table, which we specified here. So we need to divide our large bitmap data into small 3x3 three three chunks, which we can work with. So we need to convert our x and y to a local x and y for this, that specific chunk. So it should be a number between 1 and 3 only for the x and y and then we will later get an ID from that which will be between 1 and 9 for our dithering lookup. Uh, so our lookup table is 3x3 three three, which means that our chunk x and y needs to be the remainder of x divided by 3. So this means that if x is divided by 3, our chunk width, the remainder is the local chunk x and the same is done for the y. To get the remainder of a division in code we use the modulus operator the percent sign which will give us the local x and y. So I'm just going to write there local x equals x percent 3. Um, now just to make it better code I'm going to actually use dither size here but we could use 3 if we wanted to shorten that. And then the sh same for the y. Just like that. Now that we have the x and y um, locally of this specific pixel in regards to its chunk, um, we need to find an ID that we can get from dithering lookup, uh, so we can get it from dithering lookup, sorry. So let's say there, required shade, so the shade it needs to be in order to be shown as white um, is equal to dithering lookup, and then x plus 
in brackets y times 3 or times hither size <coughs> like that now let me explain this so the required shade this is the shade that this variable needs to be in order to be shown as white is equal to dithering looker so this array here and x plus y times dither size so that will get a variable a number between 0 and 8 or 1 and 9 I'm not sure it would be 0 and 8 sorry yeah um, and we times y by dither size because that will be a whole row and then we add x now we need to see if the shade is larger than required shade if it is the pixel is white otherwise it's black so I could condense this but I'm just going to put it in a standard if statement so if shade is smaller or equal to required shade else it's not the required shade yet so we can fill this in and edit our bitmap data now so bitmap data dot set pixel x y and then here I'm just going to set it to be uh, black because it's uh, less than actually yeah I think I'll set it to black but it might have to be white I'm not sure we'll see what works and then I'll copy this line and make this one black and this complex looking thing here is a hexadecimal color so basically 0x 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 is black and 0x f f f f f f is white and now we can't actually add this to the screen yet nothing will show up so after our if statement let's create a sprite so there sprite equals new flex sprite just like that and then we will load the graphic which will be bitmap data so sprite dot load graphic bitmap data and normally we would pass a string to a file here however we will just pass it bitmap data and then we can add this to the screen and let's see if this works oops I need to CD into my project lime test Nico alright obviously it's not working oh yeah I think I know why we need to uh, oh no we've done that oh I know what the problem is we were referring to our X and Y here however the reason we made local X and local Y is so we could look it up in required shade so this needs to be local X and local Y times did the size just like that now hopefully this will work here we are so we've got the dither now it's going from black to white so I did muck up that if statement I thought I did um, so put ff 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 here and change this to zero 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 I just had that in the wrong order but now we run it it should work perfectly and um, this implementation works well and demonstrates the theory I wanted to demonstrate however it isn't terribly fast I could optimize it I'm doing a lot of things really badly um, like declaring heaps of variables inside that for loop but uh, I think it would only cause confusion and I don't want that Nico M1 implemented uh, this code in GLSL rather than hex which would be much more suitable to real-time implementations because it's a shader that runs on the GPU and I'll show that here um, so you can have a look at the code for that if you want to make this one on GLSL but I think the theory is really interesting and I wanted to show it for hex hope you enjoyed this video I think the output here looks really really cool um, I'm not sure how it looks in a video because the video not, might not be high enough quality to show the individual pixels but um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it it's really difficult to explain well however it's a fairly simple concept once you understand it if you have any questions you can comment below the video or tweet me at 5mixer
Thanks for watching and share it and like it if you enjoyed. Thanks.